Good morning. Do we have any visitors today? No. Nope. Any joys? Yeah. <laughs> it's not raining, is it? <laughs> um, we'll go to announcements. Sunday school today is because of the women's parties. It, it's going to be outside in the, on the picnic tables out there. So we're going to have it out there. Monday, May 24th at 6 is a prayer meeting before the Bible study. And and then Monday, the same day, May 24th, uh, Merle and Joan will be down there in the sixth chapter of Joshua. Next week is the annual fishing tournament over here, May 28th and 29th. And then uh, May 29th is a <clears throat> community fish fry. You can bring a, a side dish, covered dish if you want. Monday, May 23rd at 7.30 is Ebenezer's hosting a movie, My Brother's Keeper in a Sanctuary. And the tickets are only available online, right, Tyson? That's correct, yes. Okay. And then Wednesday, June 3rd at 7, My Brother's Keeper is a movie. And Saturday, June 5th at 7. Tuesday, June 15th at 6.30 is Ladies' Fellowship. Saturday, June, 20, June 19th at 8 is a men's fellowship breakfast. July 4th at 11 is Independence Day program. We'll have the meal and games. July 9th through 11th is a women's encounter at the cross. July 19th through the 23rd is vacation Bible school. Volunteers are needed. If you can help, contact Michelle. And then August 27th through the 29th is men's encounter at the cross. Do we have any birthdays? Well, there we go. <laughs> Thought you were going to get that slide by, didn't you, Brenda? <laughs> Is there any others? Let's sing happy birthday to Brenda. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Is there any anniversaries? We'll have the children's story. Okay, kids, come on up. Okay, do you guys? what Mr. Terry said in the announcements about what is this coming weekend. Some of you might even be in it. The fishing tournament. The fishing tournament, yeah. So look, I have our little fishing tambourines, don't I? We have a special song that we're going to do later with these. You guys will probably know the song. You guys can help us too. Okay? So, you know what Jesus said one time? He said that Peter, he was talking to his disciples, and he said that you guys will go make our fishers of men. Normally, what do you normally catch? When you fish, what do you normally catch? Fish. Yeah, you catch some kind of fish. Sometimes it's turtles if you're Doug, right? Uh, you catch turtles. <laughs> but yeah, but like I said, normally you probably catch fish, right? And so, how do you do that? How do you do that? If God tells us we're going to make fishers of men, what do you think that means, Isaiah? Fish. Yeah, how do we fish for people? What do you think we do? In the ear? You think if somebody grabs your ear, you're going to want to listen to them? <laughs> you are? Oh, I don't know if I would. Mm. What do you think, Ava? I think that they did tell them about Jesus. Yeah, that's what Jesus was talking about, wasn't he? So do you think you guys can tell people about Jesus? Yeah, or sometimes, you know what, you don't even have to say anything, just the way you live. And if you act like a Christian, sometimes people will know that you're different, won't they? And they'll say, man, I really want to be like that person because they're nice to people, all people. They say nice, kind words. 
okay? So those are the kind of things that we want to do. We can also use our mouth, can't we, Ava? So we can go up and tell people about Jesus. What's one way we could tell them? Yeah, we could tell them to pray. We could actually pray with them. We could pray for them. Okay, all different ways to do that. But can you actually just tell them about Jesus? Yeah. Yeah. You guys all have friends at school, and so you, sometimes you can just talk to them about Jesus and see if they do believe in Jesus. And if they don't, then maybe you can help lead them to Jesus. That would be kind of cool, wouldn't it? Yeah? Okay. All right. We're going to say a little prayer, and then we have a song that we've been practicing for our congregation. Okay? So let's say our little prayer, and then we'll get our little tambourines up. Dear Heavenly Father, we just ask that you let us be fishers for men and that you let us go out and use the Holy Spirit to work inside of us so that we can go and spread your message to the world. Amen. Okay, before you guys get your candy, we're going to do a... You can have them. All right. Oh, my balloon must have got a gathering him today is every time I feel the spirit.
you please join me in the call to worship. Come Holy Spirit. Our Come Holy Spirit, pour your blessings on us. Let your presence challenge us to proclaim God's presence and love in everything we say and do. May we feel God breathing through our worship. May we receive the Holy Spirit in this place. Amen. Please join me in the opening prayer. Almighty God, your Holy Spirit came to Jesus' disciples, hidden in an upper room in Jerusalem, a violent man from the fire, for the symbols of the new things and in your lives. May your Holy Spirit burst into our lives today, encouraging and inspiring us to proclaim Jesus Christ who offers healing and hope to all people. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And our opening hymn is Spirit Song. seated. Thank you, Jesus. The epistle today comes from Romans chapter 8, verses 20 through, through 27. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now, and not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption, to wit, the redemption of our body. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for what we see not, then do we have with patience wait for it? Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself make an intercession for us with groanings we cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Would you please stand for the reading of the gospel? The reading of the gospel today comes from John chapter 15, verses 20 through, through 27, and chapter 16, verses 4 through 15. But when the Comforter is come, whom will I send unto you from the Father? 
Even the spirit of truth which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. And he also shall bear witness because he hath been with me from the beginning. But these things have I told you that when the time shall come ye may remember that I told you of them. And these things I said not unto you at the beginning because I was with you. But now I go my way to him that sent me and none of you asketh me whether goest thou. But because I have said these things unto you sorrow hath filled your heart. Nevertheless I tell you the truth it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you, but if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he comes, he will reprove the world of sin, and of the righteousness and of judgment, of sin because they believe not on me, of righteousness because I go to my Father, and ye see me no more, of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Howbeit when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you these things to come. He shall glory, glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father are mine. Therefore, said I, that he shall take of mine, and show it unto you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for this day. We ask now, dear Jesus, that your blessings will go with us. Guide and keep us in your perfect care. Dear God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Well, Good morning, and it's good to be back in the pulpit. Thank you, Lord. Uh, so, we just asked earlier about birthdays. And who can tell me who birthday it is today? Anybody? We just talk about the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit birthday. It's the birthday of the church, the day that the Holy Spirit came down. This Sunday in the church year is Pentecost Sunday, and which is the first Sunday uh, in Pentecost when the church was founded. When those gather in the upper room, as was read earlier, and they received the Holy Spirit. But before going into that, uh, I just want to say this, that I am happy to see Murph in church today. And he, need, he don't need to go in the back. He need to come on back here and make all the noise so we can hear him. Because that's a beautiful sound. Colton and Kat, I just want to say uh, congratulations again. And we just continue to keep uh, Murph in press. So he can come in here and make all the noise he wants. That's got to be all right. We're going to deal with that. But yeah, so today is Pentecost Sunday, which is a special day in the church. And it's a day where we celebrate the beginning of the church, where people were gathered in the upper room awaiting that promise from Jesus Christ. The promise that Jesus Christ gave his disciples and told them uh, that he was going to send a comforter. You see, in the scripture just read, Jesus Christ promised the Holy Spirit to his disciples. He promised them that he was going to send an advocate, a comforter. And on this particular day, that promise was fulfilled, which is the church birthday. The day of Pentecost is special because it filled us with joy and happiness. Now, don't get me wrong. A lot of people talk about the pouring of the Holy Spirit. But you see, in Scripture, it talks about 
uh, being filled with the Holy Spirit. And I'm sorry that uh, I, I didn't. I wanted to bring an illustration so you can understand what I mean by pouring and 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 and, and being filled. You see, if you have a cup here and you pour water over that cup, the cup will not be filled. It will have water on it. That's why uh, some people make the, 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 the statement that we, I was in a pouring rain. There's a pouring rain because the rain pours on you. It don't go within you. It pours on you. But if you fill that cup with water, and I know you heard about the saying where a, a glass is half full. Now, if you fill that cup with water and it fills to the top, there will be no space for anything to come in there. And hence, when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, there will be no space for anything to come in there to distract you or cause you to do something wrong. And so, when we talk about the Holy Spirit and being filled within us, there are a couple of things here that I want you to, to think about. Because when you get filled with the Holy Spirit, you experience a whole lot of different things in your life. And those are good things that you experience. And so, being filled with the Holy Spirit, you begin to focus on the things of Jesus Christ. You begin to focus on those things that are good within your life. You know, things like uh, uh, joy, peace, humility, you know, speaking in tongues. There are a lot of things that goes on. But what I want to focus on this morning as we talk about being filled with the Holy Spirit are three things that I want to share with you. Now, before going into that, I want to share here with you uh, 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 two important things that I want you to, to, to take away from here. Number one is that all Christians, when you receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you get the Holy Spirit dwelling within you. Now, hear me out. You get the Holy Spirit dwelling, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. But then, if you Pray and ask God to fill you with the Holy Spirit. That is different from the indwelling of the Spirit. You see, the Holy Spirit is already in you, but you are not filled with the Holy Spirit. Because you have Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, the Holy Spirit comes and lives in that place. But that does not mean that you are actually filled with the Holy Spirit. And that's what happened on the day of Pentecost. The, 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 the followers of Christ had Jesus with them. And if you notice in the scripture that was read, Jesus talks about going away. And he's saying that if I don't go, there will be certain, you will not experience what I have for you. So I can be with you. And so, therefore, when you get filled with the Holy Spirit, you have a new experience. You have a new understanding of Jesus Christ. And now if you look in John chapter 14, verse 16, Ephesians 1 and 13, and 2 Corinthians 1 and 2, and Ephesians 4 and 30, it talks about the indwelling of the Spirit. But not all live with, uh, have, not all lives are filled with the Spirit. And so this morning, what I want to share with you is just a few things on how you can become filled with the Holy Spirit and what happens when you become filled with the Holy Spirit. First, being filled with the Holy Spirit means having the power and courage to testify about Jesus Christ. You see, in John chapter 15, verses 26 to 27, Jesus reminds us of the power that we will possess because of the Holy Spirit. In here, Jesus states that, but when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, 
even the spirit of truth which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. And ye also shall bear witness because ye have been with me from the beginning. What Jesus Christ is saying here is that you will testify of the Holy Spirit, which means that you will have that power and courage to share the good news of Jesus Christ with others. Testifying means speaking the truth about something we are knowledgeable about and feel it daily. And so what I'm saying here is that when you have that power and courage, you are able to speak about Jesus Christ without fear or favor. You are able to go in places and tell people about the love of God and how Jesus has been uh, good to you and Jesus can be good to them too. You'll be able to explain about the Holy Spirit and how you, can, how you have overcome certain situations within your life. My fellow believers, to be filled with the Holy Spirit is a daily thing and not a one-time event. What am I saying? Paul reminds us about pressing towards the mark or goal which is Jesus Christ, our high calling. And therefore, we must continuously ask God to fill us with that Holy Spirit, to give us that boldness and that courage to be able to speak about Jesus Christ. Wherever we go, wherever we are, and who we come in contact with. Secondly, to be filled with the Holy Spirit means that we must consistently remain in prayers. Consistently remain in prayers, asking God to renew our heart and mind daily. Yes, I stated earlier that you have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. But when you don't read daily, when you don't Put yourself in God's word daily through prayers and speaking to God. You lose that effect of the Holy Spirit. You know, I always share this with uh, some of my friends who, when we're having discussion about church, and they say, well, you know, I go to church on Sunday and, and that's, that's, that's all right for me. Well, okay, that's good. But do you eat only one day in a week? I guarantee you, if you have that one meal on Sunday, by Sunday night, you'll be looking for some snacks in the refrigerator or somewhere. And then by come Monday morning, oh, you're looking for that, that heavy breakfast. Like, like the one that uh, Tyson took me to out in uh, Emporia in a commercial diner where he always challenged people on that, uh, what do you call it, the big mess? <laughs> yeah. I mean, even if you had that, that uh, uh, gigantic uh, 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 meal, which is the big mess, by the next day, you're going to be looking for more food. And so that's what it is. We must consistently remain in prayers with Jesus Christ. First Thessalonians 5 in 17, tell us that to be filled with the Holy Spirit requires constant prayer because you are consistently conversing with God Almighty. The Holy Spirit begins to guide and lead us into a path of righteousness. You see, when you pray on a daily basis, consistently, you see a seismic shift taking place in your life. You know, I thank God that... Uh, Sister Penny brought it to my mind that, Pastor, I just have this thing on my heart that's saying that we need to pray in our church. And so what we do here is that on, on, on Monday evenings at 6 o'clock, we come in here. Even if it's just for 20 minutes, we take that time to just devote it to God in prayer, interceding for others. And that's what it means. You see, when we consistently remain in prayers, the Holy Spirit gave us the strength to overcome adversities and trials. Yes, you must say, look, Pastor, I pray every day, and I consistently remain in prayer for certain situations in my life, but I don't see any change. 
But I say to you, my fellow believers, that when you consistently remain in prayer, you become filled with the Holy Spirit, and God begins to bring that change in your life. You might not see it right now. Sometimes you might not even see it in your own generation. But the generation to come will have that effect that God has for you. You know, there's a saying that you might not need him. You might not, you might not get it when you want. But our God is an on-time God. Our God is an on-time God. God is not a McDonald or Burger King to have it your way. No. The Holy Spirit, when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, consistently remain in prayer. I tell you, my fellow believers, there will be a change that you might not even understand, but that will continue to take place in your life. Finally, to be filled with the Holy Spirit means becoming conscious of the truth. Becoming conscious of the truth means becoming aware of your sinful desires and attitudes. Yes, when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you become convicted of the things that you do, the things that are not right with God. You become convicted and aware of how you talk to other people. You become conscious of your attitudes and, your, and, 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 and the way how you react in certain situations. And what happens? You begin to change. You begin to see that change in your life. Conscious of the truth means that the Holy Spirit will also care for you and guide you in all your ways. Jesus Christ reassures his disciples in John chapter 16, uh, verse 13. Where he states here, where he talks about in John chapter 16, verse 13, he says that how be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, but he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever ye shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Yes, he will show you things to come, as I indicated earlier. The Holy Spirit begins to reveal things to you that you didn't even know that exists within your life. The Holy Spirit will guide you and lead you. Yes, the Holy Spirit, which is our, which is our conscience of truth, will guide us through our time of wilderness. Remember in Exodus chapter 13, verse 21, when God guided the Israelites in the wilderness by a pillar of cloud by day and a fire at night. So the Holy Spirit will guide you as you go through your own wilderness. Yes, we all have our wilderness. I have mine. I've been dealing with some of them. But the Holy Spirit has guided me and taken me through that. I'll just share a quick story with you about my own wilderness. You see, I was in the military for 11 years. And God convicted my heart through the blessed Holy Spirit and said, it is time for you to do something different. And so, actually, a year before my 11th year into the military, I began to go through this process of thinking what my life would be, how things would be different in terms of my military career. Because I have served in almost all areas. I have reached to the position of a senior non-commissioned officer, which is an E7. And so I began to think about what I wanted to do next because I have served as a platoon sergeant, I've served as a squad leader, I've served on the battalion staff, I've served on the division staff. And so now the only thing that was left for me was either to become a first sergeant or to become a command sergeant major. And I was thinking about it, I said, well, you know, Lord, I, I don't know what I, what I want to be, you know, in charge of over 300 soldiers or 400 soldiers and they're looking up to me. 
And so I began to think about it. And so, lo and behold, as I was going through my prayer time in 2007 when I was deployed, going through my prayer time, I had this strong feeling that God was calling me into the ministry. But then I said, I said, Lord, you know, I don't want to go into ministry because I got over four different family members in ministry. My father is an Episcopal priest. My uncle is an Episcopal priest. My brother is an Episcopal priest. My, my younger brother is an AME pastor. And my wife is a chaplain. I, I mean, that's enough for one family. That's enough for one family. I don't need to go there. And so, you know, I shy away from that. And then in 2008, I deployed for the second time. And God kept on pressing me. And so eventually, I went through the process. And what made me to believe that it was God who was doing all this was because I was downrange as a platoon sergeant. There was a situation where I got removed from my position as a platoon sergeant, but then I was sent to the division headquarters to work with the chief of staff and the general. And so I was put in a position where I could do, I could process all my documents without worrying about uh, 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 supervising other soldiers. That was the first sign. Secondly, when I returned from deployment in 2010, I got, I was put into the Army Chaplain Kennedy program. And so I got off active duty and became a civilian. And that's when my wilderness started. After I completed my training as a chaplain candidate to come back on active duty, the Army said, no, we don't need you anymore because you're too old. <laughs> You've passed the age. Now I'm frustrated. Three years of being in, in seminary and graduated, and now I can't get on active duty. I got a wife and a kid, but my wife is a chaplain, so I said, well, you know, God, we're going to keep on moving on. And I did everything in my own power to get on active duty, and I never did it. And then it became worse because after I couldn't get on active duty, I couldn't find a job. Over eight years, I couldn't find a job. Because why? God said, I got something for you. What I have for you, you don't see it right now. And trust me, I was in my wilderness. I was frustrated. Sometimes I, I will lay up all night and arguing with God. God, why you brought me to this place? You said you, you, you showed me everything. But I was in my wilderness. But then there was that small voice that kept on saying to me, my grace is sufficient for you. Yes. The things I was seeing while I was in my wilderness, the Holy Spirit was guiding me. I share this story with you so that you can know that even if you find yourself in your, in your wilderness and you can't see your way through, the Holy Spirit will be there for you. Yes, I said over eight years. And then 2018, we moved to Arizona. Because we were moving, we moved from, from 2010 to 2018, we moved like over five or six different times because of my wife's assignment. Everywhere I got to, by the time I could try to land a job and start working for the first two months, the army tell my wife, hey, you got orders, you got to go. And so we were leaving, we were moving from, from Kansas to Washington State from Washington State to South Carolina, from South Carolina to Texas, from Texas to Arizona, from Arizona. And I mean, that was just my life. And that's the life of an army family. But then in 2018, God got me an assignment to come on active duty for 18 months. 
I got on orders to deploy. I deployed in, in 2019, and then after 2019, I came back home, and I said, well, I gotta find me a job, because when you deploy and come back, you off active duty then. And then lo and behold, I'm here standing in the pulpit at Ebenezer, at OP, and at Madison. You see, when you go through your wilderness, God will guide you and lead you. You might not see it right now. You might not feel it right now. You might think that all things is going against you. But I say to you that God would give you that conscious truth. That conscious truth of the Holy Spirit when you allow the Holy Spirit to dwell within you. That conscious truth will guide you and keep you. So I say to you this morning, my fellow believers, on this Pentecost Sunday, which is the birth of our church, do not just settle for the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. No, press forward. Press towards becoming filled with the Spirit as Christ's disciples receive it in Acts chapter 4. I mean, Acts chapter 2, verse 4. It reads thus, And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. And when you get filled with the Holy Spirit, you will have that power and courage to do great things. You will be able to keep in conversation with God, be in prayer consistently, and becoming conscious of the truth of that wish God has for you. Amen, amen, amen and amen. At this time, Perry, uh, Terry, I will ask you to please continue with our prayer concerns. Do we have any <clears throat> concerns that we would bring before the congregation? <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we come today before you to pray for comfort and healing for Harley and the Generet family and the, te the parents and the grandparents of the te teens that were lost and for Kylie Miller. Lord, please keep your hands upon them. Please help them to recover. And Lord, we know if we come to you that you will help to heal them and comfort them. In your son Jesus, who taught us to pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Um, the tie and offering box is in the back there if you want to give, give your ties. And we'll stand for the response. Closing him is uh, Kumbaya.
Please receive the benediction. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Amen. Amen.